Love and Hip Hop Miami cast member Chameleon is about a lot more than reality TV and twerking. If you've been keeping up with season three of Love and Hip Hop Miami, chances are that you saw a scene in which Chameleon and Suki Hana went to a Miami radio station and had a somewhat serious conversation about colorism and other trials in the music industry. Stay tuned for a clip in case you didn't see that. In that same interview, Chameleon revealed that her great-grandmother was the first woman to be electrocuted in the state of Georgia, and she would be the last person to be electrocuted by the state. Let's get into the story of Lena Baker. Have you ever felt... Are you listening? Damn. And just very briefly, before we get into it, I need to shout out for Newt for getting her comments pinned in my video about Tina Turner shooting Randy Jackson. If you didn't know that and you hadn't seen that video, check it out. It's pretty good. Chameleon is a rapper who is pretty well known on the Miami scene, and she is one of the newest cast members of Love and Hip Hop Miami. On camera, she comes across as very genuine, and she seems to be the twerk queen of Miami. If you are not familiar with her music, you might want to check her out. I hadn't heard of her before this show, but I loved her personality, and that made me check out her music. And now her song, Womp Womp, is in my workout playlist. In one of the more serious moments on the show, Chameleon sat down for a radio interview. Here is what happened. Bumping, this is who I am. How did you get to that point? Like, I think back about my great grandma's, like, she was the first woman that was electrocuted in the state of Georgia and the last person. Wow. Yeah, she ended up killing a white man that was like coming to kidnap her. Oh, this is real. She tried to get away from a man. He kidnapped her, put her in the shed, and it was tussling, and the gun went out. But everybody knew, like, he was a f***ed up person. So they killed her, and then after that, they pardoned her. So it's like, for me, I think about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, my grandma was a soldier. Like, she didn't, she didn't fold. You know what I'm saying? My heart goes out to Chameleon and her family. Let's get into the history of Lena Baker's case. My source for this story is the New Georgia Encyclopedia. Lena Baker was the first and only woman to be executed in Georgia's electric chair. She was executed in 1945 after she was convicted of murdering a man who had imprisoned her. At the time of Baker's execution, the Georgia prison system was already under scrutiny for reform. Lena Baker was born in 1900 in the small community of Cotton Hill, about five miles southwest of Cuthbert, the seat of Randolph County. There, she and her family, which included a brother and two sisters, did farm work for a living. Later, Lena Baker and her parents moved into Cuthbert, where Baker cleaned houses and did laundry to support herself and her three children. Ernest B. Knight, a local grist mill owner, hired her to care for him while he recovered from a broken leg. The two apparently became romantically involved, and the Albany Herald later reported that Ernest Knight, who was white, soon began to keep Lena Baker, a black woman, in the grist mill for days at a time. Lena Baker testified at her trial that Ernest Knight had forced her from her home on the evening of April 29, 1944, and taken her to the grist mill, where he locked her in. Her testimony in the court record indicates that the two tussled over a pistol, which fired, killing Ernest Knight. The trial convened on August 14, 1944, at the courthouse in Randolph County, under the jurisdiction of Judge Charles William Tugun Worrell, who presided at court with two pistols on the bench. In her testimony, 
Lena Baker describes how Ernest Knight locked her in the mill house while he went to a church singing. When he returned, he brought her something to eat but refused to let her leave, she said. When she insisted on going home, the two began to argue, and he brandished an iron bar that was used to lock the door. Lena Baker said she feared for her life and attempted to push past him to leave. As she did, Ernest Knight was shot through the head. Lena Baker testified that she walked immediately to the house of J.A. Cox, the county coroner, and a man for whom she had done field work, and told him that she had killed Ernest Knight. The trial lasted less than a day and concluded with a guilty verdict and a death sentence for Lena Baker. Judge Worrell sentenced her to be executed. However, Governor Ellis Arnold granted Baker a 60-day reprieve so that the Board of Pardons and Parole could review the case. In January 1945, the board denied clemency. Lena Baker's execution date was rescheduled for March 5th, 1945. She was taken to Reedsville State Prison on February 23rd, 1945. Lena Baker went to her death calmly and proclaiming her innocence. Her last words were, quote, what I done, I did in self-defense or I would have been killed myself. Where I was, I could not overcome it. God has forgiven me. I have nothing against anyone. I picked cotton from Mr. Pritchett, and he has been good to me. I am ready to go. I am one in the number. I am ready to meet my God. I have a very strong conscience. End of quote. She was pronounced dead at 11.26 a.m. after six minutes and several shocks. So here is a quick side note away from the history. In case you're wondering how long it typically takes someone to die by electric chair, the answer is 2 to 15 minutes. I know that we now know that it took her 6 minutes and several shots to die. The way that that procedure is supposed to go is this. The prisoner receives a jolt between 500 and 2,000 volts for 30 seconds. And the attending doctor waits for the body to cool after each jolt and checks to see if the heart is still beating. If the heart is still beating, another 30 second jolt is administered. Now, I can only hope that this is how it went for Lena Baker, uh, meaning that her execution was performed as humanely as possible. But with the Georgia prison system already under scrutiny at that time, one can only hope. So, back to the history. The Cuthbert newspaper reported Lena Baker's death with the headline, Baker Burns. Lena Baker was buried in the cemetery next to Mount Vernon Missionary Baptist Church in Randolph County. In 1998, a group of concerned church members marked her grave. Georgia now executes the condemned by lethal injection. The state prison's old death chamber in Reedsville has been restored to its original condition. There, visitors may see the chair, known morbidly as Old Sparky. They can also see the generator, switchboard, embalming room, death row cells, and recreation area known as the Last Mile. The Under Death Sentence Register is also on display, along with other official documents. Most prominent of all, however, is a stark black and white photo of Lena Baker taken the day she was signed into the prison. Typed underneath it are her last words, which I read earlier. In August 2005, Lena Baker was pardoned posthumously by the State Board of Pardons and Paroles. The board acknowledged that the 1945 decision to deny Lena Baker clemency was a, 
quote, grievous error, unquote, and that she could have been charged with a lesser crime of voluntary manslaughter, which would have prevented the sentence of capital punishment. Well, that's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment so that we can get a discussion going. Please share on all of your social media, especially your Facebook, and thumbs up this video on Facebook too. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that we can talk about this kind of stuff and more and you'll know when all of my videos are being uploaded. Thank you so much for tuning in to Ty Said What Ty Said on YouTube. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.